All right, everybody, welcome to another session. Now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, I had this assumption of having the homogeneous equation, right? So everything so far in this higher order module focused on the homogeneous. So I'm going to relax that. I'm going to look at the non-homogeneous equation. Okay, but first let me go ahead and write the linear uh, um, nth order differential equation. So you can see we have we've visited many times, right? So there's nothing new that I'm introducing in here. But this is going to look like that. Now the right hand side, as I said, non-homogeneous, so it's going to have a g of x, right? Um, I did mention this, but I'll, I'll highlight one more time. But I need the information from the previous segments, okay? Because what I said was I will separate the solution into two. One will be the complementary solution, and one will be the particular solution. So this will be for the homogeneous, and I have covered it. Now the question is how am I going to find this, right? So that so far I have not uh, covered it. So there are alternative methods for that. I'll introduce a method at this point and I'll talk about its limitations as well. And then in the upcoming segments, I will focus on other methods to solve non-homogeneous equations, right? So let's write this in non-homogeneous. So today what I will do is I will look at the undetermined coefficients, right? Um, but also I want to uh, re-emphasize, I talked about this, but these are all numbers so far. Okay, so I have a n, I have a n minus 1, and I have go all the way to a 0. These must be numbers, right? These are not functions. If this is sine x, what I'm going to talk next is not going to be applicable. Today, the undetermined coefficients will be applicable to some functions. I need to have some type of a g of x to have a approach that I'm going to introduce, right? So it's not applicable to every single GX. So this is not a universal solution. Just want to highlight that from the get-go. And I will, uh, you know, make like a table for you. Let's say that I have a G of X over here and let's have a YP, which is the particular solution over here. Let's say that if G of X is equal to a constant value, right? So I will look at the form of the YP and the solution will look like A. I don't know what A is, okay? The C can be like 5, right? So then I'll solve it and I'll try to I'll, fi I'll try to find a solution to this particular linear differential equation, right? So now I will actually go one step further and let's say that I have, uh, you know, 2x plus 5, let's say, gx is 2x plus 5. Then I will go ahead and try a solution in the form of ax plus b. Let's go one more level up. Let's say x squared plus 2 as an example. So now, one thing important, be careful over here, you're not going to write ax squared plus b. You're going to write ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So you'll start from the highest order and you're going to write all the lower orders as well, okay? So if, uh, you know, maybe I don't even have to mention this, but let's say the third order, minus x. I'm making these up, doesn't really matter. So I get myself, you can imagine, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Bam, that would be my solution, all right? In the form of obviously the goal here is let's say this is the question that I give you then the goal is to find a b c d values and I have not shown it yet I will uh, show you illustrate you have to approach that as well but at this point this is your responsibility you're seeing this over here this obtaining this form is your responsibility so that's why I'm highlighting this let's say that uh, let's continue the analysis let's say that this is sine x or cosine x okay then I will get myself a sine x plus b cosine x, cosine 3x, sorry. Um, now one thing that I want to highlight here is note that if this is just sine x, you're not going to write a times sine, x, sine 3x. You're going to write a times 3x plus b times cosine 3x, right? Sometimes it may turn out to be b equal to 0. That's a different story. But you still need to try it. And there will be many, many times that b and a will not will be non-zero, all right? And one more thing that this will be applicable to is let's say call it e to the 2x, then you're going to try a e to the 2x, all right? But also not only this, but I can have a combination of these. Let's say that I have, um, like, let's pick two of them, like this one and this one. So let's say x squared plus 2 times e to the 2x, right? Then what I will do is this is right over here, actually, right? I will say a x squared plus bx plus c times e to the 2x. Note that I didn't add another uh, constant for this because, you know, when you multiply one constant, let's say that this is d, right? 
a DA I can call something else like DB I can call something else CD I can call something else right so I don't really need that so let's go one more let's say that I have uh, you know let's pick the same one x squared plus 2 times sine 3x then you're gonna do a x squared plus bx plus c times sine 3x plus um, let's continue here dx squared plus uh, ex plus f times cosine 3x right so you can see that now I will have to find all these six uh, unknowns that I have here um, let me do one more time because I am um, you know gonna give you the hardest one ever e to the 2x let's use the same one x squared 2 sine 3x right so then what will the formula is going to look like it will look like this ax squared plus bx plus c that will be for the polynomial then i will multiply by e to the 2x times sine 3x plus then i will have d x squared plus e x plus f e to the 2x cosine 3x right so this is kind of uh, you know a general guidance on what I will be focusing on right um, and at the beginning I informed you that uh, you know careful this is not applicable to everything so let's say that I have my given as ln x right this is not gonna work right um, so be careful about these things let's say I give you 1 over x you cannot try 1 over ax it's not gonna work right so that's not gonna work or I gave you let's say that sine inverse sine right I don't have it so I have to look at another approach that I'm going to introduce in the upcoming segments all right so this is only applicable for these things do not uh, try to uh, create things and try to solve them okay um, and now what I will do is the next step is okay now I know this how it looks then I will illustrate you how to solve any question like that okay but note that I still have to go through the previous segment knowledge to find homogeneous equation then I will go ahead and use the non-homogeneous component as well all right so let me start by an example that uh, you know we can uh, kind of solve let's say this second order given to me as 2x squared minus 3x plus 6 right so this is a linear equation you can see it's the second order it's a non-homogeneous because the right hand side is non-zero as I mentioned the approach is this first I'm gonna start with the homo genius equation so basically y double prime plus 4y prime minus 2y is equal to 0 right so if I use the ancillary form from the previous segment you will see that 4m minus 2 is equal to 0 then I will do my typical m1 comma 2 is equal to minus b so minus 4 plus minus b square so 4 square which is 16 minus 4ac right by 2 okay so that will be this will be um, square root of 24 so that is uh, 2 square root of 6 so if I write this you will find that I will get and 1 comma 2 will be minus 2 plus minus square root of 6 okay and then if I do my typical analogy from the previous segment you will see that I will get c1 e to the minus 2 plus square root of 6x plus c2 e to the power of my let's do minus parentheses so it's 2 plus square root of 6x um, one thing is it looks uh, not so nice but at the end of the day these are just numbers right if you just punch this into your calculator you'll get two numbers over here so that's fine right so far I have not introduced anything new right so far we have known this so now I will go out and find my particular solution in order to do that if I need to look at the right hand side because if you look at this right hand side if this was e to the power 2x I still would get the same right it doesn't really matter but now I will have a polynomial of a second order over here so naturally I will go out and try a particular solution that looks like this ax squared plus bx plus c okay so if I take the derivative why am I taking derivative well because I will have to plug y double prime and y prime and then equate right and left hand side of the equation to find my ABC values right so I can see in the equation I have the second differential and the first one as well so I have to be taking the derivative with respect to uh, x y p prime will be 
to a x plus b and y p double prime will be 2a right then I will go back up the equation actually for a good measure let me not just write this so I don't make mistakes uh, it will be not nice to solve this again you know to y p why did I put y p because I'm now starting the solution step okay let's do insert it over here so it's going to be 2a right so simply from here right so I just plug it over here then plus four times of 2ax plus b minus two times ax squared plus bx plus c, right? Okay, and this will be equal to the original right hand side of the question that is given to me, this 2x squared minus 3x plus six. Okay, I memorized it, I think. 2x squared minus 3x plus six. The rest of the procedure is extremely similar to what you've been doing since high school, right? So if I have, um, you know, uh, let's say a polynomial, right? You want to equate whatever in front of um, like x squared. You want to equate that whatever that needs to be 2 over here, 2x squared. And this minus 3x over here and plus 6 for you. I mean, equating right and left hand side of the equation, so nothing real that difficult except I made some mistakes over here right so but let's get going so I'm gonna take x square parentheses so when I look at this look at this this is the only one that has a um, uh, x square so it's gonna be minus 2a okay plus let's do the x parentheses so you can see here I, I get an actually let me just mark that off so I don't have to worry about it um, 8a over here right and what else do I see minus 2b I'll show you this one right minus 2b and do I see any other x no I really do not plus let's look at the constants so I'm left with 2a plus 4b minus 2c is equal to right hand side which is 2x squared minus 3x plus 6 now again let me repeat myself x squared so then this needs to be 2 right this needs to be minus 3 right this needs to be 6 then. So you can see I get myself a nice situation where I'm trying to find 3 equations and 3 unknowns. And it actually it's not too bad of a 3 equation, 3 unknown because there can be some cases where it's very complicated to solve 3 equations, 3 unknowns. This isn't one of them, right? So you can see from the very first equation that I will get myself a is equal to minus 1. So that's good, okay? Once I know my a, I'll look at the second equation. So 8 times a will be minus 8 minus 2b is equal to minus 3 so you can see from here b will be equal to well let's be careful 8 5 minus 5 by 2 right two and a half and then once i have it then i will have 2 times a which is minus 2 4 times b which means uh, minus 10 right minus 2c is equal to 6 so you can see here 2 10, if i move it to the other side 18c minus 9 right i got myself c is equal to minus 9 from here okay then let's look what I started with. I was um, investigating this, and now I know a, y, b, a, b, and c. Then I have my y, p is equal to minus x squared minus 5 by 2x minus 9. So this is y, p. But remember, the goal is to find the, the, the solution, the general solution, that will be composed of the complementary solution, the particular solution. Uh, if I go back and see my complementary solution was hopefully I'm not going to make a mistake here uh, minus 2 plus square root of 6x plus c2e to the minus 2 plus square root of 6x so minus x square minus uh, let's call it 2.5x minus 9 so that's going to do it for this particular question you can see that this will be my solution so I have myself uh, a complementary solution I have myself a particular solution I sum them up so what about this c1 and c2 values then I need to have initial conditions right to solve it so that that is beyond the scope for this particular question so that's the formation needs to be supplied to me okay all right thank you for watching the segment I'll, I'll come back with another example for you thanks